Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay. Today we're doing a new product try-on video. Some of these things are newly launched and others are products. I just haven't really gotten to showcase to you guys, so very exciting stuff here. Before we get into it, if you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it at any point. And before we get started in makeup, I do have a couple of skincare products I wanted to talk about. They're from Hero Cosmetics, and it's called their Clear Collective line. They are the sponsor of this portion of today's video. I've worked with them previously. If you have yet to hear about Hero Cosmetics, they are a skincare company, obviously. You can find them at Target and on their website. I love working with them, so I was super excited to share their new launch with you guys. As I mentioned, this is called the Clear Collective. There's three products in the line. We have a cleanser, a toner, and then a moisturizer. Let's start with the exfoliating jelly cleanser. I've been using these products probably around a month at this point to really get a feel for them and be able to have some pretty solid thoughts on them. So this is the cleanser in the line. Line. It has little cognac jellies in it, which is super unique. I did not even realize that when I first tried it. I was like, why does it have this like texture in it? But it's super fun and not what I was expecting from this cleanser. So besides that, it has glycolic and mandelic acid. Also has some willow bark and AHAs, BHA and PHAs. Has a couple from each of those. I think it also has fruit enzymes in it. You can use this cleanser daily and it's for all skin types. When I first heard about this cleanser, I was expecting it to be like pretty like gel like and almost drying because I feel like skin products that are usually geared towards combo the oily skin or clearing up your skin can tend to be a little bit drying but this totally surprised me it's actually a really beautiful just like almost bouncy texture on the skin it leaves my skin feeling really balanced and hydrated and not at all dried out so that's totally a win in my book I love when cleansers don't feel drying on the skin but are still very effective and leave you with a nice clean slate. And the next product in the collection I think is definitely my favorite. It's the Clear Collective Balancing Capsule Toner. So this isn't your typical like liquidy toner. It's almost like an essence or like a serum toner. Very thick so you can just apply it with your hands and it feels so luxurious on the skin. I like how you don't have to use like a cotton round with it or anything. Once I'm done cleansing my face with the exfoliating cleanser, I'll put a couple shakes of this into my hand and apply it on my face and neck. It just glides on beautifully. I love the texture of this. It's super unique. I haven't tried any like toners that are this consistency. Also, if you look closely at this, you will see these little oil capsules that are suspended in the toner. So when you put this on, they burst and leave your skin feeling really hydrated and moisturized. Again, with this whole line, I feel like they did a really great job at making the products effective, but not drying and keeping just a really nice, happy balance with your skin. So this features green tea water, those oil capsules that I mentioned. It also has witch hazel and zinc PCA, which I absolutely love zinc in skincare products. It works really well for my skin type. I'm super glad that that was included in this formula. I really can't say enough good things about this collection, but specifically this toner. This is something when I run out, I'm immediately going to need to repurchase because I totally see myself missing this in my collection. The texture of it, it's just super unique and feels wonderful on the skin. And lastly, to lock everything in and add some moisture, we have the Clarifying Prebiotic Moisturizer. Again, for all skin types, use this daily. I've been using it morning and night. So just like your stomach and gut has bacteria in it and eating probiotic-rich foods helps to balance it, your skin is similar. Your skin also has a microbiome to it. So the prebiotics in this formula is gonna help keep your skin balanced. I can't emphasize enough that I love how they did very balancing products and not something that's overly drying because for me personally, I feel like when my skin is like out of balance, I get way more breakouts. So props to them for doing that. I really enjoy that aspect of it. And the texture of this is also something that surprised me because when I hear of clearing products, I think of light gels, things that dry quickly and kind of leave me wanting more moisture on my face. But this is super supple and it leaves a beautiful base for makeup. You'll see in the makeup portion of this video, it just left my skin feeling so good. I feel like 
like I don't need primer. It's definitely moisturizing enough where you don't feel the need to go in with more products on top of it. So this trio has really truly impressed me. This would be great if you're a skincare beginner or you just wanted some new products to try out. Such a great, simple and effective routine. So they are sold on Target, but I have a discount code for their website. I will pop it on the screen here so you guys can snag a discount. I'll also link it in the description below. So thank you to Hero Cosmetics for partnering with me again. And I always say thank you to you guys for supporting my channel, subscribing, liking, commenting. I appreciate it all. So be sure to check in the description if you're interested, but let's go ahead and get into the makeup portion of today's video. All right, since this moisturizer leaves such a beautiful finish for under makeup, I really don't feel like I need a primer of any sorts. My skin's feeling really nice and prepped already. Foundation I'm using today is not a new launch, but it's one that I've been meaning to try out more. If you watched my foundation roundup video, I mentioned how I wanted to test this out more. If you haven't seen that, I will link it up in the info card. But this is the Oma Beauty Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. I hear a lot of good things about this. I've tried it a couple times and wasn't like really amazed with it. I thought it was really nice. So we're gonna play around with it again today and see how we like it. And this is the shade Fair Lady T1W. Just gonna take a little bit on the back of my hand. I'm only gonna start with a tiny amount and then use this foundation brush to blend it in. It actually looks really pretty. This is a flat powder brush. I don't know what brand this is, but I get them um, in the Ipsy bag and they're so nice. I have a lot of their brushes now. I'll try to figure it out and link it below for you. Foundation has like the perfect amount of scent to it. Like it smells good, but it's not overwhelming. This is actually looking amazing. It looks so smooth. Maybe it's because I was using a sponge before. I kind of forgot how I applied it. Not like super full coverage with that amount. You can still see like that little pimple, that one here. Let's do the other side. So it actually doesn't claim to have full coverage. It says for medium coverage, use sparsely. For full coverage, use generously. And then for extreme coverage, apply multiple layers. So I agree with the use sparsely and you get like medium coverage. Try to build it up a little bit more. I would say I did about one and a half layers of it and it's giving me a amount of coverage I really enjoy. I still have to conceal that little guy, but overall like it even my skin tone really nicely. I'm loving how it looks as I mentioned. We'll see how it wears. I'm very excited about this. It's just, I'm feeling it. I do have the moisturizer on so like it's not completely matte. At the moment, I'm sure it'll change depending on how you prep your skin. I like to have at least moisturizer under any foundation just to help everything blend together. So moving on, we're actually not gonna do concealer yet because I have a new cream contour product here to talk about that I'm really excited about. So these are the new Danessa Myricks cream contour products. I have three shades, I'll show you all of them. The packaging's really cute. It has this like button on the bottom that you open up. It has a mirror in there. So this one is the shade light one. Here we have light two. And then this last one here is medium one. Starting on the end over here is light one. The middle is light two. And then on the end is medium one. Light one and two look similar, but light two has a little bit more warmth to it. And then medium one has a pretty strong warm undertone to it. They have more than just these shades for this product, by the way, I believe they have nine shades total. These are just the three that I have. I'm going to be using light one today. And I'm gonna use it with my Luxie flat contour brush. You can use these with your fingers as well because they're a cream formula. They do like to be warmed up a little bit. So sometimes I'll just work it right in the back of my hand so it gets some body heat to it. And just starting right under my cheekbone. I'm gonna apply that and then brush it upward. Not really using this brush to blend it, more just to apply it. Just doing a little bit on the forehead here too. Because these are creamy, you don't have to worry about anything drying down. They're really light, gorgeous, like moisturizing formula. It reminds me a lot of the Fenty Beauty ones. The Fenty Beauty shade I have is super cool toned. This one is more of like a warmish contour, which I don't totally mind. I think actually sometimes like a little bit more natural. I've been using this combined with that one. I think it's really pretty. Whatever is left, I'm just working on the jawline. I'm taking a little brush, I'm doing a bit of nose contour. And then also if you wanna make your lips look fuller, you could go around your lip line with this. Now to blend, I'm using my Haley's Beauty sponge. 
I blend it out like a dream. I adore the pigmentation of this product. It's not super sheer where you have to continue building it. it. Just has that perfect amount of pigment where it blends really naturally into the skin. I feel like a lot of contour products on the market previously have been like very thick and pigmented. So even when you use a tiny amount, it can be pretty difficult to work with. These are very user friendly, especially if you've like never done contour. Honestly, kind of looks like a cream bronzer on me. I really enjoy the tone of this. If I were to say one thing, I wish I had one more fair shade that was like very cool tone because I know for me when I have like very fair skin I love a cool tone contour I have my Fenty one anyway but yeah that was it really enjoying these from Danessa Myrick so far to spot conceal I'm just going to use the Kosas revealer in the shade 03 I'm not using a lot of this literally just for that little spot and any others around my face and then I feel like you can really let that sit on your face for a while so next for the under eye I'm using my elf camo concealer not new but I love this concealer I know elf has a new camo CC cream I believe it has some form of chemical sunscreen in it and I forget like which type of that I usually like break out in a rash from so maybe I'll try it we'll see if you guys have tried that let me know what you think of it on the other hand this elf concealer does dry rather quickly so I don't really waste time with this one. And I don't have a new setting powder to try out either. So I'm just using one that I know works. And I also wanted to give the foundation a good chance. This is the Haley's Beauty Loose Powder. And I'm using the Real Techniques setting brush to set under my eyes. I'm also using the same product to lightly set the rest of my face since we did have some dew going on. Next for a little powder bronzer, I'm going in with the Lily Lolo. This is the Montego Bay bronzer, which is pretty deep. I think we can make it work. Using a Luxie blush brush. I love this. I have two of these. Only picking up a little bit and bronzing the face. This isn't super pigmented, so should be fine. And for blush, I also surprisingly didn't have any new blushes to try out. So I'm using the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur in Blurred Buff, one of my favorites, and popping that on the backs of my cheekbones. I love doing contour under like, found, uh, not under foundation, under powder and bronzer, because I feel like with bronzer, you can use a lot less because you already kind of see the contour doing its thing. I also don't have any new highlights. So I'm using the Bare Minerals Zen, just like a light pink glowy shade. This is a Bodyography fan brush. I use this like every single day for highlight. I haven't owned a fan brush before I had this one, so pretty cool for highlight. I almost forgot about this, but I do have a new freckle product from Pseudo Labs. It comes in this little case. So this one's pretty unique. I have used this once before. This is the shade 01. These are water resistant faux freckles and it comes with this little plastic wand thing. So basically, I'll explain it before I do it. It can be super messy, but you take the brush out and hold it this way so the product drips down, hold it to your face and then run this over it so it like splatters onto your face. It actually looks really natural. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Hope my shirt does not get dirty. I don't know if you can tell but I did way too much over here and uh, now I'm regretting it. So you have just seen me apply this faux freckle to my face. I lost the other half of my recording of the video that I had just filmed so I'm refilming it today that's why I look different but I put on all of the same base products and I did the freckles. I did them a lot less dramatic because if you saw in the previous scene there was a lot on my face and I regretted it a little bit so I feel like I got them a little lighter today and they're looking a lot better so I do enjoy this formula. I wish it was a little bit easier to control because sometimes it can get just out of hand. For brows today, I do already have them filled in a little bit with a brow pencil, but I have two new products to share. First is the Lime Crime Bushy Brow Precision Pen in Dirty Blonde. I bought this because Alexandra Anale, I think is how you pronounce her last name, posted about this. She has a video, a bunch of videos on her brows actually, and this was swatched among some other brow pens. I was in the market for a brow pen and I didn't want anything too warm, so this looked perfect. Grabbed it off of Amazon. I've been testing it. And I feel like I'm not the best at applying it. I feel like I have to continue building my skill with it, but I do like it so far. So we're going to take this with a light hand and kind of just fill in the sparse areas that we have left after using the brow pencil. This is not something I'd recommend if you want to do your brows super quickly. It's more of like a precision detail thing. Brows are showing up like very warm on camera right now, but they're not. Really love the tone of this and I will continue to use it. I really love it for the inner corners of the brows just to get that like little fluffiness. I definitely would not just use this to fill in my brows because mine are like way too sparse, but just for some added detail, it's really nice. Garbage truck out there is living its 
best life. Now to set the brows, I have a new product from a new clean beauty brand, Merit. This is their Voluminizing Pomade. I have the shade Blonde here. Really gorgeous gold packaging. Here's what the applicator looks like. Pretty typical, just like brow pomade brush. A little bit difficult to swatch, but it's a really nice, not too warm tone blonde. I like blonde brow products usually are very like red or warm, but that's beautiful. Very like taupey. It doesn't feel like a gel. It's more of like a creamy, I guess it's a pomade. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use this to set my brows and we'll see how we like it. I will be doing a full video on this brand Merit by the way so keep an eye out for that. They have like a whole collection of products. Really nice. Definitely not a wet like brow gel formula. It's very soft feeling. I enjoy the texture this added to my brows. I'm wondering if it's gonna hold well though because it doesn't feel like a very like stronghold brow gel. It's more of like a definition type vibe. We'll see about that. Moving on to our eyes. I'm gonna start with a primer. This I tried in my Jason Wu video, so not super new. This is my second time using it. It's the Wu Prime Eye in the shade White. And I don't typically use eye primers, so I'm trying to get into this one. So much product always comes out. I'm just using my finger to dab that on my eyes. I actually didn't do any concealer on my lids today. I think I did in the, um, well, beginning part of this video. I thought I'd try it without today. And we are going to create the look that you saw in the intro. I'm going to recreate it. Eyes are primed for our palette today. I've been meaning to use this in a video since I got it and I purchased it around the holidays. So finally we're using this. This is from KVD Vegan Beauty. This is their Edge of Reality eyeshadow palette. This is fully recyclable. So if you see this little divot here, you can pop the like shadows out and recycle them. And this also doesn't have any metal pans in it which is really interesting and unique in the shades. I mean, they're very pretty. Let me swatch some of these shimmers. Since our look is neutral today, I still wanna show you these shimmers. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. These are super smooth and pigmented. Last time I checked, this eyeshadow palette was on sale on Ulta and Sephora. I will link it below. I'm not sure if it's still on sale, but let's do a little bit of a look with this. So I believe I started the look with this very light, taupe shade in the corner just as a transition very very light almost like skin tone for me i think the mattes in this palette are very blendable and pigmented too like i really don't have a problem with them getting patchy i used to own the um kat von d before she sold her brand eyeshadow palette back when they first came out and i really like the matte like neutral palette that she had i'm not sure if these are like the same formula or if they've changed them since then if you guys don't know she has sold her brand to a different company so she She's no longer the owner of this brand, new owners. Next, I'm gonna grab this like mid-tone, like peachy brown almost. And this I'm using in the outer V of my eye. I actually kind of forget how I did the look in the beginning. So with like two looks in one, in one video, I guess. I'll try to make them pretty similar. <laughs> it was very neutral. Now for the very outer corners, dipping into this deep warm brown, little shadow brush. I just put the same shade I used in my crease, by the way, on my lower lash line. I'm using this in my outer V again, but creating much more of a precision application. And I'm not gonna blend this one as much into my crease. Get out of my way, hair. Now taking my blending brush. This is a Luxie Small Tapered Blending. One of my favorite brushes. It's super little, but fluffy. I do wish this palette just had like one more deeper brown just so you could get a really nice depth to it or even just a black. I think we're gonna leave it like this. I don't think I went very deep for this eye look. It was very soft. For my lid, I'm using the light champagne in the middle there, which is so pretty. It's a really nice neutral tone. It doesn't seem to pull super warm or cool. I'm just gonna use my fingertips to apply that. And this is just going all over my lid, very simple. The metallic shades are super smooth and buttery. I love how that works with my fingertips. It just like glided on. Since there's not really like a deep brown in that palette, I'm going with my little makeup -y color pop hodgepodge makeshift palette I have here. I'm taking this deep brown. This is the shade Chocolate Wasted from Makeup Geek. And I'm gonna use this as a little bit of a shadow liner. I also don't remember if I did shadow liner, but we're gonna do it today. I just like to start shadow liner by stamping it in my lash line, just so you get less fallout. And then usually when like most of the product is off the brush, I'll take the very edge 
of my liner brush and just sketch it out. Shadow liner is awesome because like even if you mess up, it's super easy to just clean it up. And then I just connect it and fill in that little gap. And then once you sort of have the base, you can really build on like the intensity of it as much as you want. Super simple everyday look to brighten up the inner corners and the brow bone. I'm using my Ofra highlighter in Beverly Hills and taking this white frosty shade. That is the wrong end of the brush. Okay. On a ColourPop E21 and just popping that in there. I love this brush. It fits like perfectly in your inner corner. I almost forgot, but you may have seen people doing like the inner corner cat eye type of like liner either on Instagram or YouTube. It's pretty trendy and like makeup looks nowadays. And for me, I never thought I could do it because I tried it and my eyes are just closer together and I don't have a lot of space between this like my inner corner and my nose so it's not a lot of surface to like really work with i've been doing it with shadow i have to make it super tiny or else it just looks super weird on my eyes but i'm going to show you i just dip into the deep brown shadow and then all i do is take the edge of it and then just like very tinily flick it in there let me do it so that's literally it i don't go more than that because it starts to look a little bit wonky, but I've been enjoying how it looks lately. If you do have a lot of space in between there, try this. It would look so gorgeous on you. I really do wish I had some more space to work with, but it's all right. Also, for some reason, I could never get this one to look sharp, but this one does. I don't know. I try. This one is not working out for me at all, but I'm done with it. It's just gonna look like smudged in there and we're moving on to lashes a couple new lash products i want to talk about so i have two mascaras that i've been testing out you may have seen me try the bite beauty one recently we'll start with this i love how this looks my only con is that it smudges when i do wear on the lower lashes so i've been pairing it with this mascara and it's a really great duo so i use the bite beauty one on top so pretty super dramatic i wish it didn't smudge because it would replace my elia one but on the bottom i use the covergirl lash blast clean which is a clean version of their like classic lash blast mascara super cute packaging this one isn't enough of drama for me so i prefer it just for the lower lashes because i find that it doesn't smudge or flake it's really nice though if you wanted to try it i mean it's like affordable so give it a shot i'm gonna curl my lashes and apply both of those if you're wondering why this is still in my eye i'm waiting for it to dry so just don't look at it anyway for lashes i wore my kiss 01 lashes in the original look which i wear all the time i just have little outer corner lashes since i filmed that there's a new lash launch i'm so excited about so i thought i would share that with you today instead okay so these are the new vegan luxe lashes from velour their vegan mink collection which is super fun i love velour lashes love their lash glue they make really high quality things so oh my gosh these are so pretty so they have the styles ranging from like really natural to very dramatic which i love that they include i feel like most faux mink or like mink lashes are usually more dramatic styles so these are like anybody could wear these and i tried a pair on the other day they're really flexible and nice so let's go through the styles this first one is very natural this is called lash next door and then we have another more natural pair this is called wispy me away these are really pretty like more clustered i love the style for my eye shape personally and next we have these ones i've already trimmed these these are called Can't Be Tamed, which are another like more clustery, fluttery style. These are the ones I wore called Sassy But Classy. Very spiky and clustered again. See my little trimmings. And then we have Wispy Me Away. Did I share these already? I think I did. Whoops. And then the most dramatic pair, which I was actually really excited about because I was like, Damn, those are very dramatic, but I feel like they'd be so fun to wear. I also already trimmed these. These are called, are even focused? This is called Shio. I mean, look at that drama. So today I'm gonna wear a pair I haven't worn. I think I'm going to go in with this style, Can't Be Tamed, because they're not super dramatic, but still have that little outer flare that I like. And I'm gonna use my Velour Lash Glue, which has seen better days. I'll do that, be back, clean up my face, because it's a mess, and we'll finish with lips. This lash style, I think is my new favorite from the collection. So pretty and really easy to put on. I did almost forget, but I have a discount code for their website. This launch is on Sephora as well. But if you want 15% off, you can use my code Lindsay15 on anything on Velour's site. It doesn't even have to be this collection. You could grab a lash glue or anything that you need. And they have a bunch of lashes, of course. I will link that below. But moving on to our lips, I don't exactly remember what lip I had on. And I also have a new product to try. So we're gonna do a bit of a different lip, but it's still gonna be neutral pink to 
go with our very neutral look we got going on today. I actually feel like this look is better than the first one I did. I'm not mad at it. To line my lips, I'm just using a ColourPop lippy pencil. This is in the shade Oh Snap, which is a really, it's pretty close to my lip color, like a coolish tone pink. Now we have another new product from Merit. This is called their Tinted Lip Oil. I have the shade Pink Beat and Marrakesh. So they look very similar, but I'll swatch them. The packaging is so cute. I really like it. So there's Mary Keith, which is a bit more deeper and warmer. And then Pink Beat has some more coolness to it. So I'm gonna go in with Pink Beat today on top of this lip liner. These don't really have any scent at all to them, which is nice. Ooh, the shade is so pretty. Mm-hmm. I think that's all we're gonna do for the lips. I really like that shade with that lip liner. Very thin and lip oil-like, not sticky at all. We'll see how long it lasts. Usually like these tinted lip oil products don't last a very long time, but we will end up seeing what it does. Oh, I did also put on some NYX Control Freak Brow Gel because I feel like the brow pomade was not giving me any like stronghold and I like a pretty strong hold on my brow. So I just topped it over that other one. So here's our finished look. I know the video was a little weird because I had to refilm, but it literally sounded like I was talking into a megaphone, so I was not gonna fly. Anyway, I really enjoy how the look came out. It's definitely a little more glam than the first one, but I love it. Still very neutral in tone. I had a lot of fun trying out these new products and I hope you did as well. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it at any point, it really helps me out. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on those post notifications. But thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.